Guys, my name is Ankush Kaurav and I welcome you to Contu series. In this tutorial, we are going to learn how to create a simple RESTful API or a simple RESTful web service by making use of all REST concepts we learned in the previous tutorial. So what exactly we want to achieve here today? I want this demo application to expose a list of students who have submitted the application form to it in the JSON format to all other software applications by providing this URI. So the idea is very simple. Any other software application running on the same network where this demo application is running on should be able to view this list of students, you know, which is present in this demo application in the JSON format by making use of this URI. So question is how to achieve this. Guys, just to keep this tutorial simple, I'm just going to show how other applications can only view this list. But in the subsequent tutorials, I'll also show how they can make use of this same URI to also create, modify, or even delete any entry from this list. So question is what all development tasks we are required to perform so as to provide such a URI which is going to enable other applications to view the students list in the JSON format. All right, let's start. Guys, in order to achieve this, I just need to perform these two simple steps and I'll be done. Firstly, I got to include this controller method in the student admission controller class. And secondly, I just got to include these three jars onto this demo applications class path. And that's all about it. So let me perform these two steps one by one. And while I do so, I'll keep explaining all related concepts in detail. So here is the student admission controller class. Now, let me perform the first step over here. So here I've included this controller method with this request mapping annotation. Guys, request mapping annotation is used to map an incoming HTTP request with a specific controller method. So here, when any client is going to make a GET request using this HTTP URI, Spring Framework is going to make a call to this controller method because of this request mapping annotation, which we have included on top of this controller method. Now, let us include the Java code, which is going to prepare the list of students who have submitted the application form to it. Cool. So here with this piece of code, I'm here preparing the list of students who have submitted the application form to it and returning the same from this method. Guys, now what exactly we want Spring Framework to do when a client is going to make a GET request using this HTTP URI? We want this application to simply return this list of students in the JSON text format. But here, if you observe, this method is returning the list of students in the Java object format. So here, what we got to perform next, we want some way to convert this Java object into its equivalent JSON text format and then return the same back to the client as a response. So question is, what we got to do here in this application to achieve this? Guess to achieve this, I just got to include a response body annotation on top of this method as well as these three jars onto the class path of this demo application and that's all about it. So let me perform these things over here and then I would explain in detail what exactly is the purpose of response body annotation and the three jars which we are going to include onto the class path of this demo application. So here I'm done with including response body on top of this method as well as these three jars onto the class path of this demo application. Now let's understand what exactly I've done over here. 
is every controller method which handles the HTTP request which are made by the clients is supposed to specify the view name which Spring Framework later uses to prepare the response which is sent to the client as a response. For example, if we see here in this controller method which receives the HTTP request on this URL pattern, you know, this is specifying admission success view name which later Spring Framework uses to prepare the actual response which is to be sent to the client. So here is the view admission success.csp which for this request Spring Framework is going to make use of to prepare the final response. Now here in this controller method what we want we don't want Spring Framework to make use of any view to prepare the final response. Instead we want it to directly send the return value of this method to the client by simply performing the conversion you know from Java object to its equivalent JSON text format and that's all about it. Now if we want that to happen we have to specify a response body annotation on top of this method. Guess the purpose of including response body annotation on top of a controller method is to simply instruct Spring MVC framework. Hey Spring MVC framework, for that controller method, please do not look for any view technology to prepare the final response. Instead, whatever that controller method is returning, simply convert that to the desired format and send that directly to the client. Now here we have included response body annotation on top of this controller method. So here for this controller method Spring MVC framework is not going to make use of any view to prepare the final response. Instead it's going to return this value directly to the client by just performing the conversion task in between. Now what conversion we want it to perform? We want it to convert this Java object into its equivalent JSON text format. Yeah. So for that to happen we are required to include these three jars onto the class path of this project you know JSON related jars onto this class path. So here the concept is when this method is going to return this Java object if Spring MVC framework is going to find these three jars onto the class path of this project it's going to convert that Java object into its equivalent JSON text format and then is going to return the same back to the client as a response. All right. So here we are done with all the development tasks which were required to provide this URI to other applications. Now let's very quickly test this using a browser. So here I have pasted this URI. Now when I'm going to press enter the browser is going to make a get request using this URI and what I'm expecting I'm expecting to receive here this list of students in the JSON format. So let's see whether it goes as per our expectations or not. Cool. So it's working as per our expectations. Guys, in the next tutorial, I'll also show how this time application can support one more format for this list of students and that is an XML format. So the idea is very simple. When a client is going to make a request, it's going to specify in what format it wants to view the list in the JSON format or in the XML format and accordingly the demo application is going to prepare and return the response back to the client and in addition to that we're going to look at some more REST API concepts. All right guys a big thank you for learning REST API concepts using Spring MVC framework with me. If you have any feedback or comments please provide them below the video or simply write to me on this email ID for all of your queries. Please hit the like button if you really like this video and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel Gone2Series and I'm gonna catch you in the next part of this tutorial.